Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about wire sculpture and jewelry. They kind of go hand in hand in some ways and we keep them in the same section here at school. So the tools you'll need for any sort of wire sculpture or jewelry making are pliers. So a needle nose, flat and round pliers. They're all listed here or pictured here. These are needle nose pliers. They're round and they come in flat as well. Wire cutters look like this. A lot of our wire is actually um, soft enough that you can just cut it with scissors, but we do have wire cutters for some of the tougher wire that we might be using at any point. Doll rods we use for making jump rings, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Doll rods are long, thin, round pieces of, well, rods of wood. And then stamping. We have a set of stamps back there that you can use for stamping on metal as well. Now, where do you find these tools if you want to do any sort of wire or metal sculpture? They're right back here. This is right next to the glazes back in the back of the room. And they um, it's all this section right here. We have colored wire, which is really, really soft and malleable. We have aluminum wire, which is also soft, but a bit stronger and thicker. And here are the stamps. Heavy duty scissors can be used for any sort of um, cutting of plastic, wood, metal if needed. These are some jewelry pieces that we have and then also the wire tools. So all of our pliers and wire cutters are up here. Down below that we have other tools that can be used for any sort of metal work if needed but also go for some woodwork. So we have some drills. Um, I think I do have some metal drills down there, some sandpaper, fasteners, things like that. If you ever decide that you need anything from this section right here. Again, that's in the back of the room next to the glazes. All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate how to actually make jump rings. Now, what are jump rings? Anytime you have a chain, it is made out of jump rings. So this is a chain I made. You can kind of see it right there. All these are jump rings right here. These, they're basically circles. And you can see how they each have a little cut in them that allows you to take them apart and put them back together. Now I also have other things in this chain like this uh, little curly cue type thing. Some of the jump rings have colored wire around them like that. So I'm gonna show you today how to make jump rings. So you need a wooden doll like this. These can be found right over here in the wood section. I've got lots of different sizes and thicknesses. I'm going to use this one right here, which looks like it's about a quarter of an inch thick. I have my wire cutters right here. Our wire cutters all have pink handles. I'm also going to grab a pair of needle nose pliers, just in case I need them. Because it can be, if you're doing enough wire, it can kind of hurt your fingers and having some pliers is actually really helpful. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna adjust you so you're not so down low, is I'm going to wrap this tightly around my doll rod. Now I want to wrap it around in a way that my coils are very, as straight and as even as I can make them. So, I'm gonna come right here. I'm trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going around my doll rod here. I don't want to go so far and so tight that I can't get it off. I'm actually going to finish this out since it's just a small piece anyways. And this is going to make a bunch of doll, or I'm sorry, a bunch of jump rings for me. And the nice thing about jump rings is once you can know how to make a jump ring, you can use it to connect all sorts of pieces together. All right, now, I just did what I said I shouldn't do. I made it too tight, I can't get it off. There it goes. So this is what I have. It looks like a little spring, okay? I'm gonna use my needle nose, or I'm sorry, my wire cutters. And I'm just gonna trim this little piece off right here. I have like an extra little piece. Now. You can use a saw, which I have saw blades right here. 
These are not jewelry saw blades. These are actually wood saw blades. They might work, but jewelry saw blades are much, much finer. I have one at home that I'm going to try to bring in. And so then basically what you do is you would just saw it right along here. Okay, and then once you saw it all the way through, you'd have a bunch of jump rings. If the saw isn't available or not here, you can use your wire cutters. And you just go through, and I'm just going to clip it in a straight line up, up where I started from. Okay, so I'm just gonna go straight up like that. And I'm just gonna do one at a time because I like to have total control over it. I'm gonna try also, see every time I clip one, I'm taking it. All right, so here I'm getting more and more of my jump rings. I'm just gonna keep cutting them. I'll get one more good one out of this. All right, so here I have my jump rings. Now you can sand them down if you want to. You can kind of clean them up so they fit together really nicely. But basically, this is how chain mail is made too, if any of you have any interest in chain mail. Um, it's just made out of a bunch of little jump rings. Our wire is soft enough that I can use my hands to do this, but you can also use the needle nose pliers if your fingers start to get sore or tired or you just want to. Sometimes it's just easier to use them for like the fine work. So you can keep building off of that. If you want to do, if you are interested in kind of like a chain mail idea, chain mail basically means uh, it's where you're not just building in one line, but you're building in multiple directions. So you might do something like, like this, and then just keep building off of that out in all the directions. All right, there you have it. If you decide to use wire, you don't have to make jump rings, but it's one easy way to make sure you can connect all your pieces together.